San Francisco and he would use a special suitcase that had a false bottom in it that had a zip, a, a hidden zipper that you couldn't see. So the bottom that was, it was covered in metal too. So if, when you ran it through the x-ray, you would just see Pardon. metal. Sorry, what? So you're fucking juggling your mic. Yeah, you're swallowing your mic. I was, so no, he, I was adjusting my uh, headset. Okay, continue. So he, so he would go back and he would bring back like half a kilo of K and Molly and maybe like a half pound of weed just for good measures. Like, fuck it, for good luck. And he would put it on the, the check on and he would fly it over and the guy would never get busted. And that's why he was like the lucky rabbit's foot of the game. And that's why I used him. I'm like, dude, you, you, you always come through. He's like, I got you, bro, I got you. And he, he would fly into the armpit of Oakland and pick this shit up, but it was fucking pure. And he would bring it back. I would process it, weigh it up, crush it up, segment it into individual pills, into individual baggies. And then I would go and I'd make deals with club owners and people that would distribute to their people. So I wasn't like a street guy. So I just was like, you know, on the chain, I was like higher up there, but still it was kind of weird. Um, but I also would have strippers that would sell my shit. I, I had two strippers named uh, Chantel and Elizabeth, and they would go and sell at Thim New, and and they would have all their clients. So I never had to really deal with anybody. I would just give it off to my my girls. Like if you ever seen the movie uh, American Gangster, like Denzel Washington's character, he had a a partner called Pink Top. Well, I had my pink top because she had her hair dyed red. I called her red top. That was that girl I shared my avatar picture. She was a runner for me. But anyway, when I got into K, let me explain a couple of the experiences. Like before the other time, the other class that I held was mostly chemical in nature. So let me get into a little more of the philosophical and the the actual effects of these things and not so much of the cold, hard, sterile classroom stuff. Now, what happens when you do a lot of ketamine? Well, if it's real, if it's human grade K, like I was said before, like the counterclockwise spiraling molecule R plus stuff that like kettle R is kind of similar. You go into a state of, of almost anesthesia. Like your body is numb can't really feel pain anymore but you're still conscious and the more you do of it the deeper you go into that sedative state to where you're almost ready for surgery and like it's your, you, but it's your, you're almost in a state of, of paralysis like you can't move so there's a phenomenon called the k-hole now what the k-hole is is a state where you're completely paralyzed you can't move but you're still conscious, and in your own mind, you're going through a psychedelic dimension that nobody, like, like all you're doing is laying on the floor in, 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 a, in, a, in a kind of a vegetative state, but in your own mind, you're literally in another world, in another dimension. That's when the ketamine gets psychedelic. Otherwise, it's not. It's a party drug. That's why it's popular amongst, like, clubs and stuff. Because you can mix it with alcohol. Well, it's, it's not advisable to mix with alcohol because you can get really sick. But if you do a bump of it here and there, it's fun. It's not too overbearing. It doesn't take over your psychology like mushrooms or acid does. It's a party drug. But if you do a fuckload of it. Now, let me tell you a story. I was at a, I was at a camping party with my, my like club crew. Like We set up like these huge raves. And we have like special effects and DJs that go all night. And we have like booths and bars and like, it's a big deal. It's like thousands of dollars worth of production. But I went there. Um, everybody's dressed up in their crazy burning man attire. And we have all these outdoor tents and we have a big bonfire, but I was in a, a tent with that girl I was trying to fuck. And, but did you, I, I, I didn't get anywhere with her. No. Oh, um, zero out of 10 so, worst story ever for continue. Right. Um, my, my DJ friend came in as we were all talking and he had a, a little baggie full of pure crystal K and he was, he stuck a straw in it like a margarita and he was just taking bumps out of it from the bag. So that's what we did. 
So we just stick a straw in the bag and just sniff out of it every every once in a while. That's that's that was the thing. So he handed it to me, and I'm like, yeah, sure. So I take a big old bump, and I look down, and I realize I had just encephalated the entire bag into my head. <laughs> and I, I give it back to him, and he looks at it, and he flicks it with his finger like, is that – am I seeing this right? And he looks at it, and he goes, oh. He looks at me, and he's like, oh, shit. Okay, buddy. And he slaps me on the back, and he leaves, and I'm like, what? I'm okay. I'm fine. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm – I'm 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 fine. I'm I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm fine. And I start slumping over and slumping over and slumping over and finally I just poof, I face plant. And I start drooling. And at that point my vision was fragmented into these crystal segments where all I saw was an infinite plane where people that looked just like me were laying on their face in every direction in an infinite space in all directions. So immediately I thought I was dead. So I was sitting there by myself in a strange world covered with fog and, and clouds and people laying dead on the ground all around me in an infinite directions all around me. And I, I was like, I'm dead. I, I I have died. I am I am dead right now. My mother is going to kill me when she finds out about that this. you're dead. That I'm dead. <laughs> that I killed myself at a drug overdose at a party. Like this is it. I I have actually died. And I, and I to be fair, that's dead. probably what she expected. <laughs> well, uh, I was good at hiding things. Um, pause. Pause. One second. While you say that, you're saying that you see yourself uh, all across, you know, however far you said, yeah, yeah. But the, yes. let's focus on the phrase, you saw yourself. Could we theorize that you may not have seen yourself if you had never seen yourself? Um, for all uh, I was aware of, that I might have been in a room where they stuck people that died on drugs. Like that was what I was rationalizing it as. Like no, I, what I, I I got put in a in a place where people that die on drugs go, and all what? these people that are dead are dead on drugs just like me, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's 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 okay. Okay. that's why that's, hey. that's what I thought. Hey, that's pretty nuts. But what I mean was that what if you what if you had never used a mirror before? You know what what would the effect have been like? Is it's a little bit of philosophy. Oh, what if you're like, blind? Yeah, like, if you're blind and you take shrooms, what the hell happens? Okay. Interesting. Um, you have visions. You, l let, me, let me digress for a second just into this. Well, you wouldn't have visions. No, you would have No, visions. blind people do see visions when, when yeah. they take uh, hallucinogenics. That's true. Confirmed. Well, confirmed. Because cool. vision comes not just from the temporal corporeal realm it comes from another dimension like there's other things you're you have another set of eyes that aren't your fleshy cow eyes that are in your body you, you have your spirit eyes and they see things too so yes blind people can see things that they're just not here so when you're when you're tripping balls on some psychedelic you're you're actually seeing spirit visions from another dimension where that dimension is i don't ask me i'm just reporting Okay, that that entire part might not be true, but blind people do hallucinate and see images. Right, I'm not I'm not saying that it's true or not. <coughs> I'm just reporting. How do like, you know that they know that they're hallucinating images if they don't know what the fucking image is in the first place? That's that's a good question. Maybe it's people who used to be able to see and then they couldn't. Yeah, um, but they might just be dialing back on memories that they've already had from good eyes. Point. Like, that's that's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, I guess if you're blind, all of a sudden you, you go from blackness to something else, you'd be like, holy shit. Well, here's the thing to consider. People that have been blind their whole life still can see visions. So vision has to be coming from somewhere else other than the physical world. I mean... Right, so it's a combination of the senses that we already know that you associate with vision, though. Like, if you haven't actually seen it, I don't know. I just don't understand how you would have a understand, basically. Well, I mean, I, all I all I can do is throw out ideas. 
about things I've come to the conclusion of. I'm not trying to convince anybody of any sort of one way or the other kind of ism. But um, if people have never seen anything before, can still see things like like take take dreams for instance. Blind people can still have dreams. So, like, where are those visions coming from? If they've never seen anything before, they're coming. The see, brain. You, the brain. So when the brain is when you're dreaming. It's secreting high amounts of dimethyltryptamine. And that's like I said before, the dimethyltryptamine drug is something that can be extracted from natural plants and components from uh, uh, leaves, roots, trees, barks, and stuff like that. When you do dimethyltryptamine, it's like literally you're having a dream while you're still awake. And I, I, I have stories about that too. Uh, but let me finish my ketamine trip. So as I'm sitting there in the room that I thought that was for people that overdosed on drugs go, I'm sitting there coming in terms of the fact that I've died. Now I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, I need to get used to this place because obviously I'm dead and I'm in a different dimension. So I need to learn how to get around here. So I need to become familiar with my new environment. So I need to ask somebody where to go. So I immediately start looking around, and there's these little gremlins that are running around, jumping on this giant fractalizing glass sculpture that are sticking like shards of light in and out of honeycomb beehives. And they keep looking back at me like I'm weird and I don't belong there. And I'm like, excuse me, do you know where I am? What is this place? And they would just look at me and shrug me off. I'm like, no, no, no. See, I, I need to know where to go. And and one of them pointed to the corner, and I looked over the corner, and this was just in the corner of the tent. Everything's happening within the confines of this camping tent. But to me, it's like this vast, like our, like our, like, like this world. Like it's like The Witcher Three or some shit. It's all happening right in front of my vision. So I'm going, what language do you speak? And they're talking to me in this weird tongue, and I don't understand. And I'm just like, okay, this isn't working. Well, I need to make my eulogy. I, I, I need to make my own eulogy. I need to I need to bury myself. So this podium rises in front of me, like 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 this 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 pulpit rises from the ground right in front of me, and I put my hands on it and I start giving my own eulogy to my own death. And all these little gremlins that were working in the light catacombs and the honey thing came and, and semi-circled, like school circled around me and started listening to what I was saying. And I'm going, well, that's that. I, I lived a good life, I guess, but I'm dead now and I don't know where I am. I'm in some strange place and I, I, I'm going to have to get used to this new place and I'm going to have to learn your guys' language because all I speak is English. And I kept talking like that for like what it felt like 30 minutes. And after I was done, they all started clapping like oh yay that was a good speech that was a good speech and then all of a sudden everything started to get lighter and lighter and all i was flying through like space and time and i saw clouds beneath me and a blue sky above me and this is in the pitch blackness with my eyes open so um, this is you know open eye hallucination stuff <laughs> so uh, I immediately wanted to move down into the clouds beneath me. So I started to push my face as hard as I could into the ground to try to fly down. But it was just the ground. So I started grinding my face into the dirt, thinking I could go, I could, I could like start flying into the downward direction when that didn't happen. So I was like in a perfect plane of glass. And behind, above me was sky and below me was clouds. And it just wasn't working. And, and pretty soon people started coming into the tent and talking to me. And that kind of brought me out of the trip. And I realized that, like, oh, this this is it, – it, it was the strangest thing to make the transition from that dimension to, like, reality. And my eyes took a second to, to get used to actual light and shapes and forms and colors. And, you know, that that's basically the deepest K-hole I've, I've ever been in. Or like, your eyes are open in pitch blackness, and you're seeing a reality that's lit up and animated and alive, as real and as convincing as anything that you will see in everyday life. 
And that will segue into my DMT experiences, which is basically you're, when you smoke DMT, and this is even more intense, like, like, like ketamine, you have to do a lot of it to get to that point. And like, it's not very, it's not very fun. But when you, when you freebase D dimethyltryptamine, the best way I did it was I would sprinkle some crystals onto some weed and smoke it out of a pipe. Um, within 10 seconds, you start having a intense mushroom trip. Like, like you took exactly no it's like i wouldn't I, I wouldn't want it either way I like like a friend of mine one time he got me like a free base pipe like he just gifted it to me it was basically a meth pipe it's a little bulb at the end with a little hole in it with a big long tube you know it's basically a meth pipe but he was he said it was a dmt pipe so i'm like okay whatever if you smoke it that way it burns the the dmt and it becomes acrid and harsh and you cough so you cough it out and you don't get it as much so so I'm like, okay, fuck that. The best way to do DMT is you sprinkle it out, and usually when you get DMT on, like on the street or from a like, I was getting. That was the other thing I was getting through my connection in San Francisco was pure laboratory grade dimethyltryptamine. It was it was a, it was a light yellow color. The closer towards white, the more pure it is. Like it's it's hard. It's almost impossible to get pure white DMT because of just the chemical nature of it. So what you would end up getting is this, this orange crumble, like crumbly, you know, sort of orangey, yellowish kind of stuff that smelled just like burnt corn tortillas. That's the best comparison I can do. Like when you, when you open a vial of DMT and you smell it, it smells like burnt corn tortillas. But you take a little nugget of weed and you roll it around in the, in the powder until it's caked. And you throw it in the pipe and you take a couple of deep breaths and you just hit that thing as hard as you can, you hold it in for as long as you can. And before your very eyes, reality disintegrates. And you start to have a dream while you're awake. And chemically, like when you are having REM sleep in the dream state, your your brain, and they've, they've proven this through tests, that your brain is secreting dimethyltryptamine. So when you're, it can induce a dream-like state while you're still awake, it can be quite unnerving to somebody that doesn't ex isn't expecting that, but you you start to like have hallucinations, like the the floor opens up and vines and trees start shooting out of the floor, and they and they start growing leaves and 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 limbs across the room at lightning speed, and like women start to come down out of the sky uh, um... wearing wearing you know like like white like angel like clothing and they start to like make gestures at your face like you see entities you see you see like 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 human like forms like mostly women like feminine like creatures do you think like maybe goddesses. that's just you well like in, like what like only like, you're seeing the women and what if people say you see something else well, of course, yeah. It's it's from your perspective. Like if you sat down in a room full of people, well, actually, that's not true. Um, in group ayahuasca sessions, which is what that other thing I was talking about is when when you drink DMT, like from the Amazonian Indians, they would have this ritual where they would go out and they would they would harvest the uh, mimosa <coughs> hostilis. Mimosa hostilis is the is the vine that grows in the jungle that has the DMT in it, and they would cook it in a pot with pergamon harmala, which is the MAOI inhibitor, which the combination keeps your liver from breaking down the DMT because otherwise it would just eat it up too quickly and you wouldn't have the long drawn out trip. Um, but if you ask them, how in the world did you know how to put that vine with that leaf together and drink it, they'll tell you that the plants told them. I mean, to this day, they don't understand how in the world these little Amazonian pygmies figured this shit out. But they it do. It could be because there were motherfuckers like you alive back then. <laughs> oh, I was Lord. running around mixing just shit bored. up. Fucking yeah. drinking it and shit, you know? What if I take this and put it over this and then just... But they probably they, chewed on a leaf. They probably chewed on a leaf one time. <laughs> something happened. And they're like, oh, they're like, shit. Oh, shit. 
I think I got it, guys. <laughs> and then they say, like, no, nah, hold on. And then you probably start chewing on other leaves, and then you mix them together, and then you get tired of chewing, so you figure out if you boil the shit, then you don't have to do all this goddamn chewing for six fucking hours. <laughs> and next thing you know, you got some ayahuasca, like fucking 300 right. years later. Well, yeah, right. Well, my point is, is when they you would do group sessions like that, where everybody partakes in the same drink, everybody's drinking the same dose, and you're all together, people will actually start having shared hallucinations. Like, are you seeing this? Yes, I'm seeing this. And it's, it's a shared experience. So there's like a hive mind mentality that starts to kick in, and you start to access some sort of like group soul thing. And, and again, I'm just throwing out ideas. I'm, I'm not... I, do you I'm think... Do you, do you think... Hold on. Do you think if you were gay, you'd see a bunch of dudes instead of a bunch of chicks? Um, that's a good question. I just fucking Factor. blew your mind. Yeah, I'm mind blown. Uh, um, as someone who's, you know, well, here, kind here, of into no, psychology, hold, I'd agree hold, with that. But I only because this is a personal experience from Corman. And we have currently nothing to compare this to. Like, we don't have a second person to do it. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I said, like, do you think only he saw it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, my personal experiences aren't the be-all, end-all of the DMT experience. Of course not. I mean, I, I've heard stories that are downright horrific and nightmarish. It's, it's like, I'm... you know. But, but there, there is a re- – here's the thing. Here's my point. There is a reoccurring theme amongst multiple people thousands of people taking the same drug and they they report that there is sort of some sort of goddess that appears to you and i don't know if they're gay or whatever i don't care the but there, there is that i well i would uh, hope so I mean, I've, I've done dmt in the shower it, i've done mushrooms in the shower it was fucking great um i fucked i i, I have fucked on mushrooms before um That's it was the one best of, thing ever i it was one of the greatest things in my life actually it, it, it's it's i i there's a special place in it's my an heart overwhelming body involvement it's just so i'm still scared of mushrooms and shit like that i mean Holy oh my god shit. We, we made it a ritual too it was so good oh my god I mean, she laid out, she stripped naked and laid herself out onto a body pillow and she just spread open. She's like, come and get it. And I was just like, yes. And then my eyeballs are like <laughs> dilated. And I'm just like, here, we're going to fucking do this shit right now. Oh, yeah. No, it, it was good. It was good. Um, it's like the peak. Like, like a, um, what I was saying, like the climax is an overwhelming body sensation. Right. Um, yeah, body it's just high. Just pure euphoria. Yeah, euphoria like you will never feel again. Um, but wrapping up my point from before, yeah, the reoccurring theme of the goddess. Multiple, multiple, hundreds of thousands of accounts of people saying that same thing. Because there's, it seems to like, what, what the Amazonian Indians say is that it, it connects you with the spirit of the jungle. And the spirit of the jungle is feminine. So you will see a feminine-like creature approach you when you do any kind of dimethyltryptamine. So that, that's, that's, that's the consensus at this point. Um, now, mushrooms, mushrooms is the same thing as dimethyltryptamine, except it's, 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 it is DMT. Like, it, it's 4-phosphoroloxy dimethyltryptamine. So it's the phosphor phosphorus version of dimethyltryptamine. So when you, what happens when you do mushrooms is that it, it takes a long time to break down in your, in your metabolism, so you trip longer. Dimethyltryptamine, you're in and out in like five, five minutes. Like you go up, you plateau, you freak out, and you're down the baseline with some slight residual effects that last you know, another like hour or so after that. But mushrooms is like six hours of this deep introspectral dreamlike lucid hallucinating serious soul searching shit like you don't want to do it with other people i don't i don't suggest it doing with other people you want to be by yourself rooms <laughs> um Corman's t- currently taking a trip right now jay willie just a different type of trip um 
well, I mean, I enjoy talking about this stuff. So, you know, like, you know, conjuring up the memories is like I'm almost there, like right there doing it all over again. Um, I totally but, get that. That's why I talk about the shit I've done. Well, yeah. It, I, I have seen, I mean, I, I, God, the last, what I remember doing is like, I have tripped so hard where like, I, I just see these like Roman pillars like, come up out of the floor and like octopus tentacles shoot across the room and start <laughs> spitting out like rubies and diamonds and they're like splashing on my face and I see like these people approach me and they, 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 I hear voices like telling me are you ready? Are, are you ready? And I'm like yeah I guess so and they're like okay and they like reach out my, their hand and I take their hand and they, they like pull me into these like dreamscapes where I'm like looking at past life experiences where I'm like murdering people and I like I, I have to feel shame for like what I did and like I'm like I'm like atoning for sins and stuff like that. So it get it gets really fucking deep at a point. It's it's not just silly Sybin like some people brush it off as. I'm gonna look at this immigrant image. I don't get it. <laughs> um, uh, mushrooms and spaghetti. <laughs> what? I, what? It's a giving head joke. But Come on, people! No, it doesn't. It looks like she's holding eating her some hair fucking back. spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, she's doing her fucking salad by holding her hair oh so it don't God. get all up in the fucking spaghetti. So she can kill that shit. The, oh my God. My first thought though was the like holding the hair back for when they're throwing up when they're drunk. Yeah, but that then, was my then other thought. Then, then I realized it's also out. a blowjob joke. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got it. If there was nothing one... about that says blowjob to me at all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know. He's sitting yeah, side spectrum. by side for fucking one. That's not the point. That is the main fucking point for me. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god. I'm gonna have to link this I'm gonna have to link this imagery link now into this, this into the isn't video even a description. Style blow job, much less a real life blow job. Oh my god. It's not the point of her eating fucking it. fat. It's about him holding her hair. Yeah, let's get back to it. More appropriate would be the throwing up <laughs> or my weird ass getting oh my spaghetti god. in the food. Well the spaghetti in the food. Have you I mean, never I... gotten a spaghetti blow job? You covered your can spaghetti oh in the just slurp it off. I mean, I've eaten spaghetti with mushrooms in it, so that's where my mind went. Like, oh, I thought it was. You've had a spaghetti blowjob before. I was gonna be. No, I mean, I've had psychedelic <laughs> spaghetti, so that's where I, my mind went there. Like the, the very first thing, because that's where I was talking about. There's no fucking way I can mix drugs and eating at the same time. I can't do it. <laughs> I cannot eat on shrooms. It's fucking damn uh -uh. impossible. Uh -uh. <laughs> um, drugs generally I... make me the opposite of hungry. I I would coffee grind my mushrooms up. Until they were like dust, and I would pour them into mint tea to help That's with That's exactly the... what I would actually just make tea out of the mushrooms. Yeah, I would add uh, like mint leaves. Very actually common. had an old pasture, like an old like cow pasture, and outside of the fence was a nice fucking mint, like big ass mint garden, more or less. Just a bunch of mint leaves. Mm -hmm. I'd take that and mix it up with the shrooms and make a tea out of it. It's fucking amazing. You ever try anything mm -hmm. with garlic in the shrooms? Garlic can be pretty powerful as well. I'm thinking I might Ugh. try to conjure you know, something. What you, want, what you want to do with any types of shrooms or psychedelic is take something with vitamin C. So if I were to yep. like mix that with shrooms with like orange juice, it actually prolongs the fucking trip itself. But just on the taste, though, I'm just thinking like masking flavors. Uh, strong flavors that like to linger um, on the palate. Garlic that's, is a that's good a flavor that lingers. Flavor. Yeah, the, you don't the want tea a flavor will that do lingers. that. The tea Why? will do that. Because it, you'll just taste that forever, and then they'll start getting paranoid about the oh, fucking shit. flavor. Oh, shit. Now I have to go like, put on a pot of water because I want now? tea. It's bad. Yeah, I can see where you're going. I feel like it, yeah, well, it could totally ruin garlic for you for the rest of your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, at the peak of the mushroom hitting me, I would start smoking weed. And see, that would that would tame it. Yep. That way, I would just take him, I would just take start snapping bong hits, and that would tame. Oh, the that just onslaught. brings you back down in check, man. I used to do that shit mm -hmm. doing blow. Uh, it was man, back one of my favorite saying... things to do was uh, like I used to work a lot one summer. You know, I was working like 70, 80 hours a week, and on my day off, 
I literally would get up in the morning. I'd fucking lay out a plate with some Coke on it, bust out some weed, and get a bottle of wine. And I would sit there and play video games and just go up, down, up, down all day. And the weed was like the, the fucking catalyst. Like, you know, like if you get a little too high on the Coke, smoke some weed. That's why, I said, yeah. that's why I said earlier is about weed is an equalizer. Like if you get, you feel like you're getting too out of control. Just take a fucking rip, and you're good to go. It'll bring you back down. Yeah, I would go. Even still to this day, if I get like drunk, I don't really like being drunk. Drunk, you know. I like a buzz, basically. Uh, like I have to smoke weed to go to sleep. Like that'll, if I can get high, then it'll kind of balance me out, and then I'm able to go to sleep. But also, sometimes that weed is the immediate fucking reactor for fucking throwing up. Really? It stops me from throwing up. Yeah, man. I don't know if I'm too drunk and I smoke weed to quote unquote balance out. There is definitely a point within me, and I don't necessarily always know it, but there is definitely a spot where, like that weed, like soon as it hits my fucking system, all of a sudden my mouth gets juicy. You know, things start to spin a little slow. Not quite. You know, it usually takes a couple minutes for it to set in. That's actually one of the worst feelings. I hate that feeling. Like when I know I'm gonna throw up, but it takes about two minutes to happen. And it always happens in stages like that. Like I say, it's the extra juicy mouth. I usually know that's when it's game time. See, it just yeah, stops watering and I can't stop it. If I get too drunk and I smoke a little bit of weed, I won't. I won't. Well, it, it helps the nausea. That's why mm -hmm. cancer patients smoke it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's um, it, it definitely. I mean, at the peak of the mushroom trip, <clears throat> I would start smoking weed and then I would just sit up. And just close my eyes, and at a point, I I had the overwhelming feeling that every point in the universe centered in my head, like singularity. Like I experienced the singularity, and it felt like the entire universe, like everything that ever was, is, and will be, was happening all at once behind my eyeballs. And that you know, I can say that, but you have to experience that to know it. And <laughs> what? I just thought you'd find that funny. It's it's a maple leaf. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a little weird because I like I understand that, but I don't because the closest I've really ever come is like I've done ecstasy. I don't know, half dozen times, maybe eight, ten at the most. And really, I feel like I only ever rolled probably like two, maybe three times. And this is like, I don't know. Oh, uh, do you know like two thousands, early two thousands era like ecstasy, like Superman's and yeah. Mitsubishi double stacks, Mitsubishi. And stupid yeah, shit oh, yeah, like yeah. that. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it was during that era. So I don't yeah. know. I feel like there was a lot of variety. Then it always necessarily wasn't a whole lot well, of MDMA involved. I, like I said, I never really messed around with pressies too much. Like I said, like I was running a racket in a city with my own supply that I was getting straight from the supplier and it came to me straight. That's like, actually what made me kind of turn against pills in general was that I'd make my era, own pills. And then my experience with prescription pills and realizing that, man, with this ecstasy shit, it can be fucking anything. I knew some guys who had some yep. pills pressed. They were more like a supplement type thing. Yep. But he was like, Dude, we literally just called these guys up or whatever, placed the order, told them how to mix it, and they pressed them fucking like a thousand pills or some shit, or mm -hmm. however they fucking sold it. And they usually cut it sometimes with meth and God knows what else, just, just to cut it, you know, because you're, you're trying to maximize Oh, they got the brown specks, man. There's heroin yeah, in them. Yeah, they, yeah. Got, they got brown specks. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, um, no, I, I would get the pure Molly and I would, I would. Uh, make a hundred milligram pills, and I put it in the number three soft gel caps, like the little clear ones. And I'd pill up a eight hundred at a time manually by myself. I would just sit there in front of my computer, listening to like heavy metal and techno and whatever, and just make a day out of it. And just make just pill up a thousand pills, and just you know, I'd go sell them. And make so it's like one. you're pressing ammo, like right? Making ammunition at home, right? Just one at a time, and it was it was tedious, but I would do it. But the, the it was so pure, it was so fucking pure that you would just take a hundred milligrams of it, and you're rolling your tits off. You start sweating. You go cross-eyed. Your eyes are like doing that like the like quivering thing. You're you're doing the jaw clenchy thing. 
which is why ravers have bean, uh, uh, binkies, right? So, but That's it was because they're fucked up, man. People like to grind their teeth and shit when they're fucked up. It was so pure, and it's just like you're having a full body orgasm for like three hours straight. I mean, that, that's that's kind of like what mushrooms. It like when when you mix ecstasy and mushrooms, it's called a, a candy flip. Holy fuck! When you mix uh, acid, I have never mushrooms, heard that. And, it's called a hippie flip. Yeah, candy. Well, no, no, no. Hippie a uh, candy flipping is ecstasy and acid. Hippie flipping is mushrooms and ecstasy. So when you mix it to it, and I've done combinations. Believe me, I've done combinations that will horrify you. I'm actually like, surprised. I've never heard those terms. I, I've, done, in myself. <laughs> I've done these things, so you don't have to. Um, no, I, I've done K and Molly and weed and acid. I've done K and mushrooms and weed and, and fucking MDA. I've done 2CC and ecstasy and acid. That was a burning man. 2CI. 2CI is an interesting psychedelic. Like I said, it was, it's part of that phenethylamine peyote thing. So pure, I, 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 when I got pure at 2CI, it's a, relate, it's a relative to 2CB. It's very visual. When you take it about 45 minutes into it, you start to sweat. And you start to see rainbow, neon, fractal, paisley, wonderland, watercolor everywhere. And the the greatest thing the greatest thing you can do when you're doing any kind of psychedelic is go take a hot shower. I, I know coming from me, that's not saying much, but trust me, this time take what, a hot like shower. Nut yourself when you get in the shower or something. <laughs> well, it's it, a running that, joke. It, it's a running joke, right? Don't worry about it. But when you every time he answers a shower, he fucks someone. That's that's the that's the when well usually his brother's right. girlfriend. Yeah. N- no, I mean, if I, yes. if, I li- if I like you, you get into the shower. If if you don't, you get the gun. And, and I, yeah, no, it's just it's I, it's. It... What are you what fucking about, Adolf Hitler? <laughs> if I do not like you, you get. No, it's the, it's the inverse. If I like you, you get the showers. If I don't yeah. like you, you get the cash. Go, go on to the <laughs> showers, or else you get the gun. Shower or oven? <laughs> yes. Shower. Please explain. Oh my so god, he, no! He just sneak some Nazi shit on me, and I didn't catch it? Because <laughs> <laughs> I just now got that. That's yeah. my special ability. Please explain. Okay, no, let me explain really quick, and then I'll get back on to what I was talking about. The, the, the fucking inside joke is is that no, and this is this is actually true. Like this, it's, it's not only counts that one story I told you guys where I fucked my brother's girlfriend in the shower. Every girl I've ever had, I've done the shower ritual with. Okay, the That's shower true. ritual. The he shower lights ritual. like six candles and into a pentagram, and so like the cow- <laughs> He goes, give me your hand, I need to spill some blood. No, no, it's Corman. It's not a pentagram, it's a fucking swastika. Right, get it right, okay. So it's like, girls I don't care about, and they're like just, you know, ditzy sluts, they get the shower, but the serious ones, they get the bed. Right, so it's like that. That's the defining so line. It's it. like dripping shampoo on them, like in slow motion or some shit. Like every, I don't get it. Every woman I've ever fucked that was like a temporary thing, I, I fucked him in the shower first. This is a thing. This is for me a personal running thing. So, but, but for you guys, you heard the inside joke where yeah, it's the shower, and I, I, because my brother's girlfriend was coming on to me, and um, they were already broken up. Let me make that clear. Okay, and so, but you know, I was I resisting. You. Um, well, you're gonna have to because that's the fact. Okay, you can you can not believe it clear, me. That's fine. But we don't let them live like live over. Don't it let it through. like where you don't let it down. That's fine. I, I'm totally okay with that or whatever. I know my own fucking life. I know my own stories. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Maybe. But she, we ended up in the shower, and like that's just it. Just keeps happening. It's a reoccurring theme throughout my life. Like I've had I've had threesomes in the shower, like two girls at once, and it always that ends up in the shower. <laughs> How big is your fucking shower? Because mine yeah, doesn't right. fit in two other women in there. I have like a Turkish bath. It's like like made out of tile. It's like a huge. You can fit like like a, like ten people in it. Well, it's, it didn't happen in this particular shower. You can fit like thirty Jews in there, and then just turn on the right. You just turn on the gas. Just turn on the gas. Right. Oh my God. Actually, we just turn on the hot on water. Cyclone B, because you wouldn't want a typhus outbreak. I have or, you know, gas water heater at the back. You gotta keep the the lice under control, you know, because that's what Cyclone B was all about. Never mind. Um, but that that's the joke to answer your question, Williams. Okay. 
How fucking rich are you? No, I just I just lucked out and got a nice. <laughs> that type of shower is like a normal thing in Hawaii, though. Well, well there's yeah. Lots of tile. Everywhere. Yeah, there's tile everywhere because the tile keeps your feet cool because it's hot. So there's there, there's concrete floors, there's tile floors, so everything's made out of tile. Down there. Yes. Well, it's it's more it's more lateral. I'm on the equator, so it's I, I'm I'm in line what are you with. Saying? Like, tile like dissipates the heat, so it's not like. Well, yeah, tile hot. and concrete, yeah, it, it it stays cool when it's hot during the day, yeah, and it's, it's carrier of earth. Like right. The, the coolness of earth comes up through That's the why... concrete. Right. That's why in Texas you you have a lot of houses built out of stone because it's a natural insulator. It keeps you cool during the day. As a refrigeration technician, when you say the cool comes up, it hurts my fucking soul. <laughs> well, it's true. No, it rises. Negative. Full fucking negative. Heat rises the opposite and cold shit drops. Like goes the in other air. No, 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 no. It's not not heat rises it's conducting the heat from your building into the ground That's not like conduct conducting the cool of the earth it's convection it's not convection well, it's conduction it, conduction well no it, it it retains temperature better than wood or plaster it it Jesus just Christ. Okay, we're gonna don't you want it to, to transfer go back to the drugs as opposed to <laughs> the because it seems like it get hot like we make him pizza Pizza stones. Well, well, yeah, if you have a fire, but my there's no fire in my shower except yeah, it's called the sun. When I'm fucking some thought. What? Oh my god! Some I'm just just fucking fucking thought. Thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's that's the shower story for you, Williams. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Um, no, but that's that's the thing. But uh, where was I? Oh yes, showering on psychedelics. It's it's like a religious experience because you got that hot water, and you got that full body sensation. Your 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 body, your your nervous system shoots up in sensitivity dramatically because it's a central nervous system stimulant. It's I'm a CNS to arousal. Out thinking about even trying this shit. CNS arousal. That's what tryptamines trigger. That's why sex is so pleasurable on them because. What happens when you stimulate the central nervous system? Well, you get raging boners in men, and you get, you know, horny women. So when you put the two together, there's good times. Um, so when I took a shower on 2CI, it was like the water was literally like pastel watercolor paint shooting out of the, 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 the shower head. And I was watching it drip off my fingers, and it was like neon rainbow fractal, like, mathematic like shapes just like that's awesome yeah it, it was amazing and i got out toweled off and i went outside and it was the fourth of july i should add so i went outside oh, and, I, and i watched the fireworks and and that was another level of cool so i saw the tracers and just the plumes of fire and the explosions so you know it, it kind of slowed time down to where you could appreciate it more where which, the fuck did you live it's a little it's random, a, but I fucking, saw some a fireworks show, like a good one, like, you know, hour long kind of thing. And we were, no shit, had to be like within 200 meters of where they were shooting them off. This is the most amazing shit I've ever done. Because, like, you could feel them motherfuckers. Like, when the mortars and shit went off, yeah. it, was, it felt like being in a war zone, or as close as I feel like I felt at this point in my life. It was so fucking awesome. <laughs> that's as close I, as you'll get to a war zone, because that's, that's, that's legitimate pyrotechnic you know, concussions and grenades going off. And more yeah, I mean, and like yeah. I said, this show was at a fucking, you know, I grew up in a beach town, and it was at, a, like, a rich people's fucking resort. And like I say, they had, like, three or four fireworks shows, but we knew some people. We're sitting out on a golf course, like, on a little peninsula and shit, uh, just, like, right across some water from it. It was fucking great. And it wasn't even the visual mm. part for me. It literally was, like, all the explosions and shit. And it was, like, like I say, a fucking hour long, just about. Nice. It reminds me when <laughs> See, I remember I remember when I, the first time I did opium. Well, the first time I did opium was by accident because I was at a rave and I was in a tent and people were passing around a, a like a, a pipe and I thought it was hash because I looked in the bowl and it was this big black ball and I'm like, oh, it's hash. So I take this big, long 
drag on it and just you know suck the hell out of it you know get a big old hit Yay. and and uh yeah i know i know you are just calm down and when the opium came on i knew it wasn't hash because something wasn't right like it, it was like ch -ch 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 Everything Jason? went into yeah, it was like Jason mode. Everything went slow mo, and people in like the dance floor went to like one quarter speed. So people were like dancing in slow motion, but the music was still going at like the the, the regular speed. So I look over and I'm like, "What was that?" And they're like, "That was open." bro <laughs> and i'm just like fuck so that was the first time i did opium so i i, I get it now it, it, it's 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 kind of pleasant but it's it's kind of weird um the only other time i did like meth or speed or any of the other drugs was by accident again and here's a story where you accidentally do meth here's how i went to a party with my brother and my and brother girlfriend? is, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> it's the same girlfriend I fucked in the shower. So funny story. Let me finish it. Um, she, no, him. We were we were perusing around the party looking for drugs, and it was funny because it would, it, it, there was a there was a system of a down cover band playing at the time, which was kind of funny. So it was like kind of rock and metal, or like kind of weird. So this this weird like kid in a beanie and like a like a jacket comes up to us. It's like, hey man, you uh you guys looking to score? You guys looking Spider. like want some pistol? And <laughs> I'm like, and my brother's like, yeah, what do you got? He's like, well, I got I got the eight hour and I got the fifteen hour. Which one do you want? And I'm like, um, I was gonna say the eight hour, but my brother's like, we'll take the fifteen hour. And I'm like, I didn't want to be a pussy, so I was like, oh uh, yeah, we'll we'll do the fifteen hour. Sure, yeah. He's like, okay, yeah, 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 sure. This is just is, um, here you go. If you have any trouble, just let me know. Uh, just uh, I'll be over there, and uh, yeah, I'll see you around. So we both pop the pill, and I'm like, uh, okay, I hope, I hope this is all right. He's like, yeah, it's fine. It's just, it's just MDMA and something else, but you know. So was this, this something else? This is something else. Dude, he he told us it was a psychedelic, and um, like he explained it all, and it all made sense to me. And so I'm like, okay, so is it? What is it based in? He's like, is it, you know, it's good. It's kind of like acid, and it's kind of like you know, like ecstasy all mixed together. And I'm like, well, what's the What's the extra that makes it 15 hours? It's like, oh, well, there's something else I, I added in there. And I'm like, well, right. So what's that? He's like, oh, you know, just a little something special. And I'm like, I couldn't get a straight answer out of the guy. So I'm just like, All right, okay. So I just take it. And about 20 minutes into it, my brother runs off into the bush and starts projectile vomiting. Like, like hard. And I wanted to vomit too, but at the point, at the point in time, it was so intense that vomiting would have been traumatic. So I held it in. And then at, th at that point, my brother's girlfriend that I fucked in the shower, this was later, of course, was, was trying to give my brother a blowjob, but he didn't want to because he was tripping so hard. So my brother was like, turn your head. My girlfriend's trying to suck my cock. And I'm like, I can't, I'm tripping too hard. Can I just go in your truck and listen to music? And he's like, "Yeah, fine, do that." I mean, it was it was really confusing. So I just went into his truck, and like the lights on his dash were like smearing across my vision. Like every time I turned my head, it would leave like this trail that would stay burned in my vision for a long time, and I couldn't see past it. And I started tripping so hard that I couldn't. I just I locked myself in his truck. It, it was a Tacoma, and I I couldn't leave. I, I'm just like, dude, I don't know what the fuck this shit is, dude, but we need to leave the party, like, now. And he's like, yeah, I agree. It, the shit's getting weird. So we all pile in the truck, and we, we, we start going on the highway back home, and I'm sandwiched between – I'm in the passenger seat, and between me and my brother is his brother's girlfriend, and she's playing fucking uh, – Missy Mistamina Elliot on the fucking CD. No. She's playing, you know, I can't stand the rain, you know, that song. And I'm just going, dude, I can't handle this right now. And she's dancing and like making little moves with her hands. And I'm just like, God, can you stop? You're making me dizzy. But we drop her off at her apartment and me and my brother are just trying balls so hard. We're going, well, what do we do now? 
It's like, well, we should go for a walk. Like where? It's like, well, just anywhere. You know, let's just start walking. I have to move. I have to physically move my body or I'm going to go insane. He's like, okay. We start walking down Ali'i Drive. And Ali'i Drive is this, this road that, that parallels the beach. And it's basically where all the tourist, well, okay, you know, preface, this is in Hawaii. This is where I live currently. So this is where all the hotels are. There's this one hotel on Ali'i Drive that is condemned. It's, 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 it's bordered off with fences and no one's allowed into it because it's been condemned by the state because it's fucking haunted. Because every time that they, they had to, sh they, this is true. They had to shut the, the hotel down because of the paranormal activity that was going on in that place. They had to condemn it and build it on a, a different property because what happened was what they found out is they built the, the hotel it was like a Ritz Carlton or something. They, 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 they built it on a, a on a fucking burial ground. So they dug up a bunch of graves. So I guess that added to, you know, the process. So we thought it would be a great idea to go into that haunted, condemned hotel in our current state with no flashlight, in the dark, not seeing anything. So we did that. We hopped the fence and we started craw crawling through this abandoned hotel with no light. We couldn't see anything where we were going. So all, for all we know, we were tripping over like dead homeless people. And we could just hear the, the sound of broken glass under our shoes. And all I could see was the, the, the lighter like flick. My, my brother was flicking his lighter. It was out of like gas, so it didn't light a flame. So he just flipped it. And it was like flashes, like photography of old just just stained you know weather weathered walls and we got into the main lobby and the, the there's a pillar in the middle of the lobby that had a bunch of photographs of people on it and it was like of dead people holding fish from like the 70s and 60s and, the, and like the, the faces started to like look at us and their eyes open they started to talk to us and shit and it, i i started to get like this demonic like feeling of dread like dude we need to go He's like, no, we need to go up to like the all the rooms and look inside of them and like, look for dead people. It's like, I don't want to do that. That's not something I want to do. And it just the drug kept going and going and going, and it kept getting like more intense because it was that speed kicking in. That's when I realized there was meth in it because I started to grind my jaw and my eyes started to shake. And I'm just like, dude, this stuff. I'm surprised is you didn't crazy. rip your eyes out. Dude, it was so intense, dude. I'm just like, God, dude, I'm fucking tripping so hard right now, dude. I don't know what to do with myself. And he's just like, okay, let's let's leave. Let's leave the abandoned, condemned hotel that has demons running around in it. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to the beach. So we hop the fence, and when we hop the fence, the security guards in the next property overheard us, and they ran over and they started shining flashlights at us, like going, hey, who's there? So we started crawling on our hands and knees in the bushes trying to get away from these security guards. And they got into their truck and started chasing us. So we're running down the street away from these security guards trying to get away from them. That didn't help my paranoia whatsoever. So eventually we, 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 we lose them. You know, we, 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 we turn a left and then a right. And we got away and we hid behind a palm tree. And this is like, okay, now what? So we, we just ended up at this, like, ghetto. Like where all the Micronesians and like all the Polynesian like like people live, like just the low income housing, and there was just like homeless people crawling around, like like talking to themselves, and there was like this blind guy that was walking around with a dead rat by his tail. And my brother's like, hey, "Do you see that guy?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "That guy's blind. He he gets those rats, and he he eats them for food." And those guys over there, they, they get, they're the ones that feed it to him. And he's telling me this like elaborate story about how like they, they feed this blind guy dead rats for sustenance because it was like, dude, this is not helping. It was, this, it was the most terrifying experience ever. And I was like, I couldn't wait for it to be over. And the sun started to come up and we ended up back at my brother's girlfriend's apartment and I'm sitting in her room and there's like this kid like sleeping on the floor next to me. I'm just like staring at this kid and it wasn't her kid. I don't even know where the fucking kid came from, but I'm just like, I look back at the kid. I look at the clock and the clock is going like the minute hand, right? Like this time is just like, 
dilated and standing still and like the in this, ugh. like and then like I, I I knock on my brother's girlfriend's door and like I'm like can I come in please I just need to be with somebody please and I'm like okay go come in and like they're in the bed and they're like naked and they're like under the covers and I'm just like I just 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 want to sit here next to you guys okay please I just need to be around somebody like okay I'm gonna smoke some weed I'm kind of coming down already I'm like yeah because you puked you puked I saw you puke in the bushes that helped. Like you got that shit out. I kept it in because I, it would be too traumatic for me to puke while I was tripping. So I had like eight hours more added to the trip because oh I held God. it in. So I'm sitting there for two days straight, just tweaked and gacked out of my fucking mind, rocking back and forth in my, in my, my chair, just going, hur, 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 and nothing would help. Dude, it was agony. Dude, I was pale. I was white. I was sweaty. And dude, later on, I later on down the line, after I learned about you know all these substances, I realized that what I was given was DOI. DOI is a synthetic LSD that is made from methamphetamine. So it, it, you get the full psychedelic trip of acid with the grindy teeth psychosis of, of meth. I forget what DOI stands for, but it was being passed around as acid for a long time for like in the early aughts but that's what that was and i had it once more when i went to global dance when somebody dosed me with it when that i that was actually more pleasant because i was at this big rave and i met this cute little 22 year old girl and she was my little like partner for the evening and we ran around and we played and we frolicked and it was pretty fun um uh what was it rabbit in the moon was the main show that night Rabbit oh in the Moon. Oh my god, I haven't heard them forever. You know them? Okay, oh, yes. Yeah. Rabbit in the Moon was the main headliner of that show, and I was fucking out of my mind on DOI. And, like, when my little 22 year old, like, fuck buddy pulled me into the dance floor, I remember, like, looking around at everybody, and everybody looked at me. Like, like, like they, they all felt it. Like they all felt like this weird energy enter their space and everybody became aware of me and they, everybody, I became aware of them and I looked at everybody and everybody had the eyes of owls, like huge, like saucer eyeballs that were like, huge, like, 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 like cartoon eyes. And they were all looking at me like, who? And it was, it was, it was insane. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were playing, and um, I remember I got a bunch of kids high on 2CE that night. I had 2CE pills, and um, I got a lot of people high at night. But yeah, I got t- whacked out of my mind, and I-, I thought the cops were coming, and they weren't. Well, actually, they were. They were waiting outside the, the-, the event, but I didn't want to leave because I didn't fucking want to see cops. But I got a ride home eventually, and... I ended up at my friend's house and I like locked myself in the bathroom and I just was staring at the toilet for like an hour and a half because the toilet was like growing and shrinking to the size of like the entire (laughs) room. Like I had to pee. I I couldn't because the toilet was trying to fucking eat me the entire time. And I'm like, I'm not pulling out my dick because the toilet's going to bite it off. I know this for a fucking fact. (laughs) It's not going to happen. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not letting it happen, okay? It's not gonna fucking happen. Finally, I got the courage to approach the toilet. <laughs> Williams, this is fucking true. I was terrified. It took me like say like like an hour and a half. I'm like, okay, I have to do this. So I approach the toilet. I'm like, okay, it's either me or you, buddy. All right. So I pull my dick out, and I'm like, I put my hand against the wall and brace myself, and I'm just. Oh, I start, I start peeing and the toilet's like going, <laughs> it's like breathing and flexing and moving. And it's just like, it's like gargling my piss, like it's eating the it. Like, oh, it is rust. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 what'd you say? <laughs> it's like rust. <laughs> oh, there's a kid in a unit from, uh, named Rust and... I don't even remember exactly how it fucking happened, but somehow in the background we hear his toilet, and it sounds like a machine. Like it a sounds like a rocket ship taking off. I don't fucking know what. 
Yeah. <laughs> and randomly, he was drinking what Zemas or some stupid he was drinking, shit like that that night. He was you know, drinking Smirnoff ice. Like two of them, and he apparently not even was two. He had one. Fuck. He had one. You know. Yeah. It was just a really funny fucking like. And then hour he puked on himself. Oh yeah, he puked on himself, and we heard it. I think like, we heard the noise. Like, he didn't did, say anything. And, and then so I, I asked, like, I was like, "Did, did you, you just puke? throw up?" That was me. Like, did you just fucking puke? <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, I was laughing too much, and it just came out." Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you heard like the he got wet shit on his microphone. It like, was you heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. You can you you heard the landing. You definitely heard the landing. Ugh. That's gross. Wow. God damn it. Oh, yeah. Same motherfucker, Dude, different night suggested that right after got turn sniper BTRs. The <laughs> MRB, that we need to get BTRs because you can uh, sit on top of them. That was like his reasoning for us using BTRs was we're, because you can sit on top of them. We were, we were like, oh, so we like just as bad guys and like infiltrate? He's like, no, just so you can sit on top of them. And then he's like, yeah, yeah, and why don't, why aren't snipers JTAC? Like that that makes sense. Like, yeah, they have big ass long fucking antennas. They give your ass away. That's that's why. Right. <laughs> Praying to the porcelain god on all fours. I, I I've been there. Oh, I Cold. fucking spent copious nights <laughs> cuddling the toilet. Praying to the porcelain god. <laughs> Oh, I mean, the only other time that was that disorienting was at Burning Man, where I did too much K. Of course you went to Burning Man. It was, it, yeah, I've been twice. Um, you weren't in You missed the Burning was, Man conversation? Oh yeah, my. I, I, That's I actually was, how we got started, I think. Yeah, I was hardcore Burning Man posting before you came in. But, the like, the, the I, well, yeah. I did way too much K on the last night of Burning Man. Actually, it was Saturday, which was when they burned the man. Sunday is when they burned the temple, um, which is a little more somber and relaxed. Uh, when they burn the man, it's That's it's every it, it's fucking chaos. Everyone just does everything that they have left. Um, I mean, if you're gonna stay, stay. But if you're gonna go, leave, because it's 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 absolute pandemonium nightmare shit so my my friend rio was running around in a pair of like platform boots with like a, a like a mirror that had lines of k around it and he had like this giant medallion that had like a, like a demonic head on it or something dude i i don't know what was going on i i haven't slept for five days at that point and he's like dude do more k and I'm like, all right, I'll do a little more. He's like, no, do more. And I'm like, all right. And he's like, he shoves my head down, and I actually, I, I, I like sniffed like the entire line. And I'm like, okay, I, I, that's enough K for me. And, he, and we, we finish off our, all our lines. And okay, we gotta make our way to the man. We have to start walking from our RV to the center of the playa to the man because they're gonna start burning the man. So I'm like, okay. So I found the girl that I was trying to get with. Um, found her. And she was fucked up on K2 and like, okay, we're going to walk together. I'm like, all right, you got me? I'm like, okay, I got you. I got you. Because it was hard to walk at this point. And as soon as I left the RV, I, I got so dizzy that my vision actually went inverted. And I started seeing things upside down. So I couldn't walk. So I, I fell over. Like I face planted. And everybody was like, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just, you know, eating dirt. You go on without me. I'll catch up to you. I'm great. And the girl's sitting there looking at me like, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, honey. And I stand up. And I start to walk five more feet. And I ended up stumbling into some other person's tent and falling into it. Oh, that's <laughs> happened to me. Luckily, they weren't in there. But I fell into somebody else's tent. And I ended up on their sleeping bag. And I was, in, I was so fucked up from cave that was everything was spinning and I, I started seeing like doctor faces like looking at me like they were trying to operate on me like they were wearing like doctor's masks and they were like holding scalpels above me going we need to operate on the patient he's starting to go i'm like no ah, ah. 
and I started to push them back with my hands, and she's like, Are, what, what's Man's wrong? Walking there, you're just, no one else is in there. Yeah, you're just flailing, you're just flailing, and I'm in somebody else's tent, and there's a weird smell, and I don't know what it is, and, and the, like, my girlfriend is trying to, well, she wasn't my, she's my fucking, you know, girl I was trying to get with, and she's like, I'm not leaving you here! I'm not leaving you here! She, she, was, she was a trooper. I, I respect her. She, she didn't leave me behind. So she, she grabbed me, slung me over her shoulder and she fucking power walked me to the middle of the playa and I'm, I'm just like I, I couldn't see straight I was I was blinded by by hallucinations I just I, I didn't even know what was happening I didn't know where I was I had no idea what was going on and finally I, I made it to the fish tank like I was saying before I made it to that fucking archive. I had no idea how she found that thing. In the myriad plethora of all those other art cars that were parked there, we found that fucking thing. She plopped me down into that couch they have in the back. And I was like, oh my god. I made it. And I can relax because I'm I'm in good hands now. And I just put my I like reclined. I put my arms over the, the back and I put my arm over her. And we were looking good too. We were dressed up. Like in our full fucking gear. Like I, I was, you know, I had my my glow in the dark dread falls with my white contact lenses with my my goth, you know, tech fucking uh, face mask and my fashy like SS fucking Nazi fucking pants and my boots and shit. And people were walking up to us giving us compliments like, "You guys look hot." And we're like, "Thanks." Like, you almost sweat my ass off. Right. But it was, it was at night. It was at night. The man was burning, and, and, the, and they were playing some banging ass techno. And finally, like, my senses started to come back to me. But I'm like, holy shit, dude. That, I've never been that high before. Like, I don't want to be that high ever again. That was, that was fucking scary. But again, that was K. And, like, you can come back from being really, really, really OD'd. And it, it doesn't. It's it's safe. Like you won't it won't kill you. It doesn't affect your your heart or your respiratory system, and you can survive it. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, more than you can like LSD, you can really freak out on. But K is like, it's more gentle. But that's the highest I ever was ever, and that that was a crescendo. And like watching the man burn, and like feeling the heat of the fire on my face. I, there, there's no describing it like just watching the pieces of it fall off as the wind like the wind was blowing really hard at that point so it was ripping pieces of it off like it's like its arm would rip off like this flaming arm would like fly away and the crowd would go yeah and cheer it was like the roman coliseum you know cheering the death of gladiators as they were decapitated you know and like the head would fall off it was it was gruesome all while they were playing like this, this Know, massive techno beats it was great it was fun i don't remember the rest of the night i i could i mean i can usually remember the rest of my trips but i i, I blacked out at that point I, I i ended up like i said in that hot ass tent with that strange girl that didn't belong there um that was covered in dust so i couldn't see her anyway you know that was the problem <laughs> Um, she was naked, but she was covered in dust, so I couldn't see any anyway, so that was the problem, right? So, so I, what I, you're saying is you probably ended up fucking somebody, it's just not the chick you intended to. God, what did I do? I don't... I ended up... Oh, yeah! I ended up in the... You know in the RV, that loft above the, the driver? Yeah. Yeah, I ended up fucking somebody in there. It was... yeah. Not I in the shower? Zero out of ten. The shower was <laughs> out of water at this point! We ran out of water! <laughs> There's a shower at Burning Man? Well, in our RV. In the RV. Yeah, but we ran out of water. So the toilet was overflowing. Uh, yeah, well, there you everything... go. There's water. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of like water. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. So the last night when they burned the temple, I didn't go to that. I just wanted to be by myself. Like everybody went and saw the temple burn. It's like like the, the the man burning is pandemonium. Everybody's fucked up. It was it's raging party, screaming, whatever. The temple burns a little more somber. Everybody's quiet. Everybody kind of just shuts up and they're like you know kind of like coming down. You know everybody smokes DMT. You can smell the DMT smoke in the air while everybody's sitting in this huge circle around the temple burning. But I stayed behind at the RV. Uh, I climbed up on top of the RV and just drank vodka. And talked to myself 
and screamed at people as they walked by. And I ended up throwing up because I drank too much vodka. <laughs> oh, that I was hate vodka. Uh, yeah, I, I, I never liked vodka after that. Um, but um, tequila. Yeah, I, actually, I, I'm a bourbon guy. I, I like bourbon. Um, There's a man burning. Everything's fucking huge. Yeah. Fireball Central. That's, um... I don't remember. I can't tell. Most of the X have worn off. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. Burning Man is a very fucking crazy experience. Like, um... I've been twice. I was there the entire time. Monday to Monday. It's a week long. Um, Holy shit. It's, it's, in, it's in the Black Rock Desert. It's a hundred miles north of Las Vegas in the middle of goddamn nowhere. Um, here, let me, um, if you didn't, I don't think you saw this. Here's the art car. That, um, oh wait, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, your fucking... What did I do? She's right. Oh, I, 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 I like my C drive? Oh, shit. <laughs> Users Ruskin. Ooh, Are you Ruskin? Ruskin? Okay, delete that. I don't want you looking at my C drive. We can't look. What? Hello? Do you not know how the internet works? Oh, you're talking about Mormon. He's never not high. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a misclick. Um, I think I'm gonna end the podcast here. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> it's been going on for an hour and twenty minutes. Anybody want to yeah. say anything before I stop recording? Yeah, I'd like uh, to thank yeah, our sure. sponsor, uh, Dollar Shave Club. It's a Beck Weldon, uh, <laughs> Blue Apron. Don't, don't do drugs, kids. And uh, Corman's, Corman's do drug dealers. Corman's, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, Corman's prostitutes. Yeah, Corman's prostitutes. Fuck it. I tell you what, though, if there's one thing that's made me want to explore the human consciousness more than anything else, it's probably the uh, the exact moment right before I was hit with, hit by a truck. There was this. There was a. a it was a voice in my head. Hold on, you were hit said, by a truck? Yeah, I was. So, a year and a half ago now, I guess. Almost two years. Oh, no, shit. Just over two years. Well, now I can't stop I recording. Was... Yeah, sorry. Continue. I, uh, I yeah, you talk. My, I've, I've done enough talking. 5th of July, so I had worked the night before, and I was working the day of 5th of July, and I was... Uh, I had taken my motorcycle to work that day. Uh, I had a, some, I had some 650. It was, it was cute. You know, I liked it a lot. And uh, I was coming home for for lunch, and uh, taking the bike just down the normal roads. And I just came off the off uh, off ramp, and I was there's this like intersection right before the road that leads like the six miles that goes to my house, and uh, that intersection is fucking notorious because it's a two way stop. And so the through traffic that goes across the bridge, uh, crossing with the frontage road, uh, like the through traffic doesn't have to stop, but the frontage road does, and therefore people just assume it's a no-way stop, and people just roll through all the fucking time. I knew that it was a fucking death trap and rolled through it anyway, um, but as I did, I saw the truck coming. Like, I saw him coming from like an eighth mile away. He, I, I watched him roll, you know. And it was kind of like my eyes became really fixed on him for some reason as he was rolling up. Like, I knew something was going to happen. You're in headlights and, kind of thing, you just kind of... I mean, it was, you know, it was this was bright of day. Like, you know, everyone saw each other except for this guy just didn't see me for, you know, whatever. I guess he just, he wasn't looking for me or something or, you know, what, you know don't look whatever like reason. Things. Oh, I'm being torn up. Um... For whatever reason, he just didn't, you know, he didn't look for me, and, uh, as I was rolling through, he just, he just T-boned me, like, square collision with the center mass of my motorcycle to <sighs> the front of his, the front of his, uh, fairly sure it was a Silverado, I don't, I don't remember it, I only remember it was, it was champagne, it was a champagne 
half ton truck and I connected squarely with his hood to a point where I could have slapped the badge um, on his vehicle, you know, with the palm of my hand. It was it was that clear of like a little memory. And the one thing that I remember out of it was this really soft. It wasn't like a it wasn't like a sad voice, but it was just really apathetic and really nurturing. And it, all it said was O, oh, like O H period. That's all I remember, and followed by you know the resulting crash where I was, I hit, I uh, flew you know about 30 yards and then hit the dirt and uh, rolled and rolled and rolled. And it looks like when you hit a when you hit one of the old computer monitors, like you smack the shit out of it on the sides and it starts like the uh-huh. pixels will start like uh, it'll start flickering with like green and blue. Like the if you sw- if you slid the RGB sliders up to like 255 on green and blue. And just flash those colors all over your vision. That's exactly what it looked like. And I, I, just, I ended up laying there, and I was like, I was thinking, like, man, I guess I don't get my barbecue today because I was gonna, because you know, I missed the barbecue on the, the Fourth of July. So now I gotta you know, go I really to the hospital. Wanted it on the fifth. Yeah, I was like, man, I really, ho- I really hope I don't have to go to the hospital. I guess I'm not gonna get my barbecue today. I started thinking, like, maybe I can get the send barbecue to the hospital. Like, I started thinking about plans. Meanwhile, I'm on the floor. I'm on the you know the ground in the in a pile of or in a little ditch on the side of the road. You know, my collarbone snapped like a twig. My my wrist is all I bent out of shape, and my ankle's pulverized because it caught between the uh, the motorcycle and the truck. But I'm sitting there having like I'm sitting there wondering, you know, hey, this is a nice day today. It was just it was really it was surreal. I was completely sober at the time, um, and. It feels like everything after that day has been different. Like something got knocked out of place and something feels a lot less immortal. Like I don't know I don't know what it was, you know, as as William said, mm-hmm. you know, it, says, it was your guardian angel saying, Oh, cause, yeah, it, it looked away, right? <laughs> it says it yeah. away for one second. <laughs> I can uh, I can share my stepdad's uh, motorcycle crash story if you guys want. Yeah, sure. Um, we, well, I live in Washington, so we have a lot of windy roads. And, um, this is before he met my mom, like way before. But um, he was riding his like Kawasaki Ninja, and he was getting pretty thirsty, and 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 he knew he was pretty dehydrated, and um, and he was following a guy that he was riding with, and um, basically all he all he says is he remembers waking up. And they, apparently he had passed out because he was dehydrated right out of, right out a corner off a cliff, and he went a hundred feet out and then a hundred feet down. Um, and he woke up and his shoulder was in front of his face. Oh. oh, and he had a branch through his shoulder, or like it was like two inches from his heart, like through yeah. his entire shoulder. Like he'd see the branch in his shoulder in front of his face, and. Uh, he ended up like breaking his back and and everything. He remembers uh, being in the ambulance and the cop came up and he was like, "You so and so?" And he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, here's your ticket for uh, wheels off the road." And I was like, "Oh, thanks." But yeah, I had it was pretty much it was he had, like, like six mm. months of recovery of being in the chair. Mm-hmm. Motorcycles like... are dangerous. It's not. No, it's not the motorcycle. <laughs> now we need Wobbit in here to tell motorcycle stories. You can't say a motorcycle is not dangerous. I ride a motorcycle, well, kind of, not currently, but I have. For the I, I'd rather be on four wheels than two. Let's just. Put it I'd rather way. be on two, but I'd rather I'd love everyone be, else be on two as well. I can't well. wait to get my own motorcycle. My my brother had a Kawasaki Ninja six thirty six, and he he fucking he would drag me. I mean, he had knee pucks. I mean, he would do that shit. What an idiot! And he stopped before he killed himself, but he, he realized that, you know, he was pushing his fate by yeah. doing that stuff. He was with a he was with a writing like a group that would go out every weekend and do that shit. And that's crazy. I mean if you wanna drag if you want to drag me, like go to Laguna Seca. You know, do it there. But when you're on the highway and shit and there's little pebbles and rocks and potholes, like any little inconsistency in the mm. road will make you like just don't even do it like like here in hawaii when you wreck you you wreck into lava lava is basically broken glass 
So you fly off your motorcycle and you basically fly 100 miles an hour over a giant human-sized cheese grater. So there's nothing left of you when the paramedics pick you mm-hmm. up. You're basically just liquid. <laughs> and like there, there's there, there, the, the highway is littered with graves. Like there's this one guy that was like going 100 miles an hour on the highway. He hit a goat. They they were picking him up over the course of like half a mile. Like, oh, here's an arm, here's a piece of his face, here's a foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just, just do it on a track if you want to race. Like, I have nothing against motorcycles, but motorcycle like like crotch rockets, they're for the track. They're they're not for the road. That's all I'll say. Okay, that's right, it. For that feeling of I'm done. Good. No more recording. That's it. Everybody shut up.